so I first of all would like to describe what is the format of my presentation because it's actually not a presentation as well as not a talk. Uh, I would like to try kind of a new format, at least here in the community. So it will be more like a live coding session. And feel free to interrupt me in any moment if you have any questions, any, I don't know, um, remarks or, or any, anything else. Okay, so what is that about? Uh, I, I would like to describe how it's possible to work with large projects such as uh, Roslyn compiler uh, without any huge knowledge of the projects and how to uh, come up with some fixes uh, to, to educate yourself what is the project about, what is the project structure and so on and so on. So basically what we will do in the next half an hour or maybe a bit more, uh, we will take a issue from GitHub, uh, which describe kind of a bug, kind of a defect in Roslyn compiler, and we will fix it uh, everything by ourselves. Uh, so basically, to the point where uh, the fix can be submitted to GitHub repository. And, and merge to the code base. Uh, so here is the how to end the okay. Here here is the issue I would like to work with during this presentation. Basically, the issue says that um, that some asynchronous calls may uh, not clear the memory after the call is finished. Uh, let's uh, dig a bit into the, the code that reproduces the issue. As we, okay, I suppose I, I should zoom in it a bit. Uh, is, it, is it okay right now? Yes, yeah. thank you. Okay, 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 okay. So basically uh, what uh, the code uh, does, uh, okay, okay, let me just give, give me please a second. I will connect from my uh, mobile phone to see the chat without interrupting the screen. Um, sorry, just, just a second. Okay. Okay, so basically what are the steps about? Uh, we have a simple console program that runs a set of tasks by calling uh, asynchronous method run and walk and, and just freezes the execution. Every, uh, every method uh, invocation just uh, evades uh, an asynchronous method and freezes the thread as well. Uh, this uh, explicit uh, collection of garbage to be sure that anything is collected which is uh, that is not uh, uh, accessible from the current uh, uh, garbage collection route. And the method itself just allocates 100 megabytes of memory. So basically it allocates uh, a quarter of million of integers which uh, should uh, lead to memory allocation with size of uh, 100 of megabytes. Uh, do just uh, asynchronous call to make the, the Helm method, method uh, asynchronous and tries to console. Uh, so what the issue is about, uh, and actually what's uh, really cool here is that the author of the issue already uh, described the, how to fix the issue. So he mentioned the asynchronous state machine code here. Uh, we will, we will uh, check it out a bit later. Uh, and what he says that uh, the problem uh, seems to be because the awaiter here uh, is kept in memory. So that after getting the result, uh, the, the evaluator uh, keeps the reference to some internals of the method. Uh, that's why the garbage collection cannot, uh, collector cannot, uh, cannot uh, clean up the memory. Okay, so 
this is the issue. And let's try, first of all, to reproduce the issue. Uh, I've already created a simple empty uh, console application. Uh, and let's just copy the code from the GitHub issue to our application so that we can check if the issue is reproducible. Uh, so here it is. So let's set all the usings. And also, I've, uh, I would like to clean up some console output just to not spam into the console. And add, uh, okay, I suppose I should do something like that. Is it, is it okay right now? Yeah. Or maybe even go into presentation mode? Okay, okay. Uh, so let's uh, output to the console the current process ID. Uh, just to pro process ID. So just to control the um, the memory uh, by by checking system um, system uh, system metrics. Get current process ID. And let's uh, let's replace the thread sleep at the end of the execution with uh, infinite cycle so that we can uh, we can uh, trigger a garbage collection as often as we would like to as well as output here the uh, current process uh, working set size so basically the memory consumed by the current process get current process working set divided by one megabyte uh okay okay so basically that's it let's let's compile and run the project and oh okay okay also i would like to remove this stress slip so to make the debugging a bit quicker because the original code uh okay it's a memory every five seconds so let's allocate all the memory right at the beginning and as we can see, even after collecting the garbage, the working set size of the process is approximately one gigabyte. So all the arrays allocated uh, inside the method are kept in memory, even considering the method execution already ended here. Okay, okay. That's nice. That's nice, but uh, such uh, 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 reproduce steps are not enough to fix the issue because uh, because right now we run the application using currently installed production SDK, and uh, to be able to work with the issue, we have to use uh, the compiler compiled from the sources. So first of all, let's uh, reproduce the issue without using uh, msbuild and .NET SDK, but only uh, using the compiler. Uh, I would like to show you how the uh, project compilation runs. I, I have to uh, to ask the SDK to show a bit more logs so that we can see all the compilation steps. And what we are interested in here is the core compile task. So basically the whole project uh, compilation uh, flow is uh, divided by a set of steps, actually step of targets, which target executes uh, a set of steps. And one of the steps is just to compile the application. And uh, .NET SDK even, even uh, writes to the output stream the command it executes. So let's break down the command so to understand what is that about. So basically, uh, basically uh, the .NET SDK executes the compiler, which is CSC DLL in .NET Core and just CSC.exe in the desktop .NET framework. This is a set of parameters about uh, unsafety of the code, not triggering warning. Uh, then, then a lot of uh, parameters named reference described. It's basically the whole set of. Oh, sorry, I've misclicked the button. Uh, 
so basically uh, the whole set of dot net uh, core application uh, references and right after the end we can see a set of c sharp files to compile it's our program says plus two auto generated uh, c sharp files with uh, assembly attributes such a version assembly name assembly company and so on so on. okay okay so let's just execute the compiler directly without using dotnet build command so here is the path to the compiler compiler installed as part of uh, 3.1 SDK. So let's just execute the compiler and uh, provide the only, oh, I suppose I should not use such a delimiter in .NET command, uh, and provide uh, the single source file to it. And here is the problem, we need the references. Uh, the references so that the compiler can basically uh, kind of link the um, classes and methods to the actual uh, method and classes de 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 described in the .NET uh, standard and .NET framework or .NET core. I've already uh, went through all the references uh, pointed in the original command and filter it so that so that is actually uh, all the references we need. Uh, so we we used uh, console in our application as a list class from system collection DLL plus uh, async stuff plus uh, diagnostic process and actually that's all the references we need. Uh, let's do some uh, some uh, ZSH magic. So I've basically uh, read the file the the file here into a variable and let's pass uh, every line from the variable as a single parameter to the .NET command. Uh, it's done by such a strange uh, statement in the console. It basically uh, transforms the variable content to a set of parameters. So instead of that, I, I can just directly pass all the references a uh, um, kind of separate parameter to the command. Okay, okay, so basically that, that is all. We compiled uh, the uh, uh, sources with the compiler directly without using MS build. Uh, and we can see here an output program X there. But what is what is uh what enough for uh for doing anything else that is not enough in the .NET core world. But actually that should work in a Windows environment using uh, using the framework instead of uh, .NET core. Uh, to kind of fix the issue, uh, I uh, would like just to publish the application, uh, the application to separate folder, so that uh, so that all the uh, so that all the uh, all the Technical files are generated uh, by .NET by .NET SDK itself. So right now we can see that in the folder I've uh, I've specified as an output. Okay, those spaces in the path. Okay, so the folder basically contain very important file runtime config JSON as well as dev JSON, which uh, helps .NET to recognize where to find uh, basically the host, uh, which is implemented as such a dynamic library in the macOS environment. Okay, okay, that's nice. So let's... Oh, where is the folder? Ah, and I've misconfigured the path, so... And okay, so let's now let's compile the uh, code by ourselves using .NET compiler directly. So here it is, and we just uh, add one more parameter. 
uh, one more parameter which uh, which uh, says .NET compiler to uh, write the output file with the name uh, the same as the file generated by uh, by .NET SDK directly. It's um, it's not something I wanted to. Okay, here it is. So out and test uh, project DLL. Yeah, and uh, for sure we uh, have to change the path to CS file. Okay, so uh, as we can check here, uh, the DLL is updated and now we can run the DLL directly and see that the issue is still reproducible without any problems. Uh, why I, I have done all the stuff, uh, the only reason because right now I can change the compiler to the one compiled directly from the sources from GitHub. Okay, so let's do that. Let's reproduce the issue uh, with uh, the compiler built from the sources. Uh, to do that, we have to clone the repo from GitHub, I've already done that. Also the issue has been already fixed so that I've uh, I've checked out uh, not the latest uh, source code version, but the one before the fix is married. So here it is. I, I have a folder with uh, the compiler repository cloned. Uh, let's open the solution and check how it looks like. And unfortunately, I cannot do that from the console yet because I too lazy to set up the file references. And here is the solution. The solution is pretty big. It's about two millions of source code lines, if I'm not mistaken. So it may take a rider some time to to parse all the project sets and to set up the uh the source code highlighting uh what i want to point out that basically in the solution we have a csc project which is which is basically the console application the compiler itself so we have also awesome.net command named .net run to run any uh, projects from the sources so let's try, just use it and try to compile the uh, sources with, with the, the compiler built from sources. Uh, okay, okay, so it's project.net Roslin, uh, SRC, compiler, C sharp, CSC, CSC dot CS proj. Also, I have to pass parameter platform platform uh, because the project is defined for two platforms. I'm not sure is it visible here or is I suppose it's described here uh, somewhere earlier in some uh, probes or target files. But just believe me, the project is defined uh, to, to be compiled to the .NET Core 2.1 version as well as to the .NET Frame. So let's use .NET Core and just pass all the parameters the same way as we do previously. Okay, and I have to do that in the way. I suppose it uh, may require some time before the project is not compiled. So that so that the .NET SDK have to compile all the projects, all the references. Uh, but while the project compiling, we may assume that we have find the place in the sources uh, where the async method is being transformed to so-called async state mach machine. So let's try to do that. I assume. Uh, that I know nothing about the project, so let's just use the uh, full text search and try to find uh, find, for example, uh, for example, invocation of this method or 
this method because we know uh, somewhere in the sources uh, the line should be written to transform uh, the method, the async method, I mean, to async state machine. Okay, let me try to minimize a bit that window so that it is. Okay, I suppose I, I have to turn off the presentation mode because otherwise I just uh, cannot see the uh, cannot see the uh, search results there. But I I I will turn it on as far as it will be possible. And we can see here a lot of uh, code which has at least a get result method, a uh, method uh, reference. And one of the method, uh, actually I do not see it here uh, at all. Okay, so let's just search for, for async. Uh, and what we can see here uh, in .NET, uh, in uh, .NET compiler, there are two classes named async state machine and async method to state machine rewriter. And I suppose it's a good idea to look into the rewriter method. And we can see here by searching, okay, let's hide this. By searching, uh, searching for get result string, that there is even a commented uh, line of code which is generated by, by this place in the code. So basically, a waiter get result is here. Okay, so. Potentially, we've just found the place in the .NET compiler uh, where the async state machine is generated and especially the line of code we would like to change. It's not for sure, it's not a good place to work with the code if the code is not covered with unit testing or any other kind of uh, testing automation, but uh, we may expect that uh, the .NET compiler code should be covered, so let's just consider that we may change anything. Let's just assume that we can change anything in the code and while all the tests are uh, re resulted with success result, everything is okay. Okay, so let's come back to the <laughs> Okay, okay, so the project run I've uh, I've uh, invoked uh, finished with an error because I've misspelled the parameter. But the project is already compiled, so so it will be easy to, it will be fast to execute it once more. And we can just check once more that the issue is still reproducible. Okay, I suppose I've checked out the wrong, yeah. Sorry, sorry, the code I've checked out <laughs> has already contained the fix. So let's me roll back the changes and let's just do that once more. So the project is compiling right now. It may take, I suppose, a minute or two. Okay, nice. It's compiled and let's run our uh, test project to see if the issue is still reproducible and it is so. Okay, okay. So what we know right now, we know that we would like to nullify this variable after the result is get. 
So basically that's what the issue, the original issue is saying that the avatar uh, kept a stack uh, after it is no longer needed. So let's just uh, assign now to the avatar so that any line of code such a garbage collection uh, will collect the avatar as a garbage. Uh, so let's discuss a bit Okay, uh, intro presentation mode, sorry, I've always forgotten to... Okay, here it is. So let's talk about the code. Uh, so you can assume that uh, it's kind of a code generator and actually those lines looks like a uh, builder pattern which builds uh, specific lines of code uh, according to the parameters provided. Uh, so let's just look what is there. Maybe it, uh, may, it will be useful for us, for example, is there now? Yeah, and we can even see that uh, there are a method. I suppose it all, okay. Okay, the method which named now or default, uh, I suppose the method returns either now or default value for value types. So let's just try to assign assign the value to uh, to a waiter variable and uh, add the statement we generated to the block returned by the method. By the way, the method is named visitavate expression. So basically the method um, responsibility is to rewrite the whole method marked with uh, uh, the, the whole expression started with await keyword. Okay, so let's try to do so and see what what will happen. Uh, clear the awaiter variable. Equal is f. Uh, also, we can see here for an example of generating a variable assignment. So let's just do it. Generate assignment. We want to assign now to a waiter variable. Uh, and to find the await variable, we can just go through the, this code and see the get result call call is a uh, variable that's sent here, and here is the evator temporary variable. So let's just do so. Here is the variable, and we want to assign now or default. And we have to, to specify the type of the variable. Let's try to find maybe there are such a property, and there it is. And let's add uh, such a statement right after the get result statement. Okay. And before I run the code, I want to go a bit into the into the EU code. Uh, I would try to not concentrate a lot of uh, EU code, but we somehow. Uh, have to check if our changes in Roslyn compiler uh, generates the code we would like to. Uh, so I, I will use uh, the uspy cmd, uspy uh, the compiler, to check how the get result method looks, uh, invocation looks now, right now in the state machine. Uh, for example, this is move next method from the state machine, and we know that somewhere at the end uh, there should be an invocation of get result method. And here it is, and here is collecting the garbage. Uh, and after uh, compiling code with our changes, I would expect after that statement in the EU code, there should be a statement to clean up the variable basically with an index of one. Yeah, for, for those who are not familiar with uh, EU code, ld walk a dot s is uh, a command to what a reference to variable into stack. This is the index of variable, so basically the second variable because the index starts with zero here. And this is just uh, instruction to invoke the method using basically the 
head of the stack as this for this invocation. So uh, this will lead these two lines will lead just to uh, to invocation of get result method as described here. Okay, okay. So let's uh, compile our code with uh, with uh, the changed the modified compiler once again and check the result. Maybe somebody has some comments or some question to ask while we are waiting for the compilation. Compilation. So feel free to ask if you want to. Okay, okay. So the code is compiled, and let's check EU code once more. Uh, once more, once more. And here is the invocation of get result method once more. And we can see here that two more instructions is added before collecting the garbage. Uh, basically, uh, uh, pushing the reference of variable to stack and calling the default constructor of task, task evaluator. Why it is not now? Because task evaluator is value object. So basically, this construction uh, assigns the empty task, uh, task evaluator to the variable, uh, dropping the previous stage of the variable. Let's check if that helps us with the, our issue. So the code still works, that's already nice, so we <laughs> haven't broke the compiler. Uh, but as we see, the issue is not fixed. The issue is not fixed, uh, so that the assumption described by the author of the issue is not the root cause of the issue. And we have to, to dive into it so that to find what is the real root case of the issue or root cause of the issue that's why i added uh, the current process id so that, that we can uh, connect to the process with uh, a debugger uh what i will use here uh microsoft uh, supports a uh, pretty if i'm not mistaken it's not it's not so a pretty useful uh, hardcore debugging tools named named SOS. SOS stands for Sons of Stride. It's basically a code name of the initial uh, version of .NET debugger. Uh, I suppose implemented in early 2005 or something like that. So right now, SOS is a set of commands which can be used on both WinDBG. Uh, a debugger as well as a LDB debugger to to uh, dive into into the application state and to figure out what is happening there. One of the command I do use is dump heap. So the com command basically dumps heap, but I do not want to see the whole content of the heap because it is just too much. Uh, so that I will pass uh, a start parameter to it, which actually leads uh, to command computing the statistic of using different types. So what we can see here is that the heap contain a single instance of array, uh, which is of size of 24 bytes and so on, so on, so on. So for example, uh, there is a single object of type exception, and what are interesting for us that we have 16 instances of int 32 array uh, in total of one gigabyte size. Let's find what are those objects. Again, dump heap, uh, dump heap command. MT stands for method table. It's basically an identifier for a type uh, inside .NET runtime uh, object structure. So we have 16 uh, uh, integer arrays in our application. Part of them actually sits are pretty small and those are not ones we are interested in. But we have 10 arrays we allocated during our uh, back uh, uh, steps to reproduce the issue. Let's find 
why this object or any other objects uh, still in heap and is not uh, considered as a garbage. Uh, there are another command named GC root. It basically stands for garbage collection root. It's so it uh, shows all the routes, basically all the places in the application runtime uh, that uh, keep the reference to the object. And what we can see here, it's uh, it's uh, consumed by some thread. So basically, the reference to the object kept in the stack. So let's just uh, check our stacks to see what is there. Uh, I forgot the comment. I suppose it's either it's seller e e e stack. That command uh, basically prints all the stacks for all the threads. Uh, we are not interested in uh, a lot of information here. Just, uh, okay, I suppose I will use another command cellar stack that prints the stack of the current thread. And uh, we just have to, uh, to switch to another thread. And I forgot how to do that thread. Select thread list. Okay, that's nice. Uh, as command outputs us, we need thread number 10, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Sever stack. Okay, okay. Yeah, and that's nice. Uh, I've output once more DC root comma so that uh, we can uh, we can uh, connect the output from uh, DC root comma to stacks. And as we can see here, uh, the reference to the object uh, is kept by uh, move next stack frame, uh, which is uh, keep a reference to object of inst uh, uh, instance of type uh, after generated the uh, double underscore one, which kept the instance to integer. As we can see here uh, in the stack frame, stack frames, uh, here is the slip method we have at the end of our, uh, our method invocation. Let me uh let me open here the uh our code so that we can see that this is this thread slip but what is interesting the thread slip method is invoked from move next method from state machine which is invoked from uh some internal execution content callback run internal blah 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 which is executed from move next method from another state machine and at the end, it is invoked by set result method of a sync task method builder. What is all that about? Uh, I suppose that's the only part of my blabbering which contains a presentation, so that I would like to describe a bit how a sync state machines works uh, and why such a references, such an object reference is kept in the state machine instance. So consider uh, consider the code as an example of a state method, uh, async method, uh, which in, in involves uh, a couple of other uh, state me uh, async method. As everybody, uh, every .NET developer knows, the async methods co are compiled to kind of state machine, which uh, which uh, uh, executes all the stuff in some async way, uh, invokes a continuation, and so on, so on. But what is the state machine about is basically a large switch case uh, statement. So uh, basically, the method will be replaced with the method you can see on the screen is not the real code; it's just an example of code structure. So, uh, so uh, Roslyn uh, modified the method to create an instance of state machine and just initiate the state machine and return the task or the object which can be used to 
to link their continuation to the state machine. And the state machine itself uh, just uh, represent the original method split by average uh, keywords. So basically, uh, uh, the state machine in this specific example will contain three states. Every of them just a copy of part of the original method code. Uh, and uh, the state machine will, uh, will link itself to the task, task returned by the async method, invoked by the method. So basically, more or less, it may look like uh, you can see right now on the screen. Again, it's not the real code, it's just the idea of code structure. Uh, because uh, the state machine we are talking about also contain a set of internal states such as a uh, state machine already uh, finished, uh, state machine finished with an exception, the state machine is not started and so on and so on. Uh, as well as uh, it contains a set of uh, uh, if statements, for example, to check if the task returned by the method is already finished so that we do not need to link the continuation and we can just continue the execution itself. What is important here? What is important here is uh, that, as you may already notice, such a code cannot compile because uh, we define the variable number in one switch case branch and use it in another. Why it is so? Because the variable basically used uh, in more than one async state machine states. Uh, to solve the problem, we just need to make the variable scope uh, larger, and that's named hoisting in hoisting with i and in the middle uh, in the compiler theory world. So basically, it will lead to making the variable a field and to use the field instead of the variable in all. Uh, state machine states. And uh, let's back to our code. Uh, let's back to our code uh, we, uh, we've uh, written. Basically, in our code, we, can, uh, we, con we have the same issue. The data variable here is defined before a base statement and used after a base statement. So basically that will lead to uh, the method uh, state machine uh, having two states. This data variable hoisted to the whole state machine scope. And, uh, to, and what's interesting, uh, what's important here is how the uh, continuation of the state machine is executed. By default, uh, after the execution, the execution of the whole method code, uh, the awaiter uh, set result method is invoked, and set result method uh, invokes the continuation of the method which calls our method. Uh, so, uh, so combining those two issues, I mean the hoisting of local variable and the uh, invocation of uh, the continuation scope of a single state machine that will lead uh, to prolonging uh, the such a variable uh, life scope uh, to till the whole continuation chain of our async method is finished. In our specific uh, code, uh, that will lead uh, to the variable to be to be available from a garbage collection perspective till the whole method is finished. Uh, for example, as the issue says, by adding uh, a way task yield here, uh, we will fix the issue because the continuation will uh, end after the next uh, state of this method is executed. Okay, that's, that's all interesting and fun, but how to fix it? Uh, so, as we consider the structure of state machine as it is right now on the screen, we just need to clear all the internal uh, hoisted variables before calling set result method. It's not a clean fix because, for example, we, in some cases we can clear the variable right after the last usage. 
in some cases we may even not hoist the variable but still it works it works and at least it is better than it was before uh, also by the way clearing the variable after uh, last usage may uh, may uh, interrupt the debugging experience because that will lead uh, to you not being able to check the variable well okay so right now uh, i suppose we have at least a couple more minutes uh, so we can try to implement the feeds let's delete all the code we written before so uh, uh, we already know that we need to change not the get result invocation but set result invocation so we can see here just method named uh, uh, generate set result which is added to body builder and right before uh, the method we should generate a code to clean up the hosted variables uh, let's try to find if there are a list we can already use and as you can see there it is or oh, the, the method is responsible to generate the whole uh, the whole move next uh, method body so that it uh, analyze uh, which variables should be hoisted so that we can just use that as a starting point and as a quick fix dog just to check the assumption uh, let's just generate basically the same code we did before f assignment hoisted local okay as we saw before we should use local method hoisted local some uh, and uh, f now or default for hoisted local type and something is not okay here we should figure out what is that basically because it's not a local variable but a field as you can see in the error so i suppose we should find field here my method here and use f this f as the instance to find to get the field from so that basically that should work if our assumption is right. Uh, so let's again, let's uh, pause the debugger. Uh, let's compile the project once more and hope it will compile. And then hope that it will run. After that, after that we will check if uh, the code we try to generate is right and it's what we expected or expect right now so basically we will go through eo code to check if the assignment statement is generated okay here it is almost let's check the eo code um let's go to the beginning uh, okay, so that's basically the first state machine do work. Uh, here is the move next method. And we expect that right at the end of the method, uh, right at the end of the method before calling such as out, uh we assign now to the field so that it is we push this basically the first method argument to stack push now to the stack and uh, call uh field assignment so basically that will lead that to field with this name of this object to be assigned with this value let's check if the issue is fixed right now and if we can see right now the garbage is collected it's still for some reason 
uh, 100 megabytes of memory uh, kept by by dotnet process and we can easily check what is that about oh. what is that about by running actually heap start command okay i suppose it's not implemented in mac os Yeah. Okay. 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 We can do just dump heap start. As we can see here, most of the memory is free and just not returned uh, to the system because dot net runtime just doesn't want to. Ah. Uh, so basically, basically that's how we can work this pretty complex solution, considering it is covered by unit test. It's not the whole fix because uh, because first of all as you can uh you can make a remark that uh, we do not need to clean up for example integers because they cannot reference any memory in heap so that we, it will lead to code something like if hoisted local type is integer or basically uh manager is manager type uh so that in this case we should if if it's not manager type in this uh, case we should ignore it also you may check the state machine structure and see that this is not the only set result uh method invocation uh there is at least one more set result that you can see here so basically we have to duplicate the code here and here uh, also if we run all the tests from the solution we will see that something about 20 tests or so are failing right now because there's a lot of uh, a lot of cases covered is in pretty easy way just by comparing the C sharp code uh, compiled with the compiler with uh, EU code generated. Uh, so that's something we should consider to go through the tests and to check every and each of the tests and vice versa. Um, I mean, I mean, uh, check if all the cases are covered by the test. So basically, that's it. Uh, so what I want uh, to add at the end, if such a format is interesting for you, just to let me know. So I will prepare some other materials from working with open source projects. Also, you may you may ask for some specific uh, open source project you are interested in, so that I will present it instead of one I like to. So. Have fun working with open source. That's all. Thank you. Do you, do you have any questions? Very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing talk. I would love you could do another one like that. Uh, uh, using the compiler directly as well as documentation for some of Stride's Stride debugging uh, extension, which can be used on most Windows and Linux based environments, is all the commands. So feel free to try it out. For example, this debugging ex extension is pretty useful in case you have some issues in production environment. So just by uh, bringing memory dump from the production environment, you can figure out what is happening there without uh, without connecting to the production environment directly. So it's pretty useful not only for for digging up into .NET runtime. Um, okay, so I suppose that's all.